Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, welcome in this new CME meeting of Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation. This meeting is very special in hemodialysis as we have a very distinguished speaker of hemodialysis in Egypt, Africa, Arabic world, and in, even internationally, who is well known Professor Hisham Sayyid. Uh, professor Hisham is a emeritus professor of nephrology and transplantation in Shams and internal medicine at Shams University. He is the current uh, vice president of Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation and the head of hemodialysis chapter in the Egyptian Society of Nephrology and hemodialysis committee of African Association of Nephrology. Professor Hisham is well known by his applications in the field of hemodialysis and all of teaching words in uh, especially in the field of hemodialysis. We are honored today to have uh, his lecture and we are pleasure to have this topic in the form of uh, what about hemodial filtration, the new settled technique of hemodialysis nowadays and the one of the most uh, in, uh, recent techniques and in hemodialysis which were established in the last years, Egypt and worldwide. So Professor Hisham will illustrate to us, I expect in this lecture, the technique of hemodial filtration, uh, talking about uh, various aspects, including water treatment in hemodial filtration, the importance of hemodial filtration, and the most important is how to implement this modality clinically, when to use, uh, when to avoid, uh, how to use, Etc. And we are expecting uh, a very interesting topic. And before I start, I would like to welcome all attending professors and all attendees uh, in this session. And we can expect a very hot, a very heavy hot discussion after the lecture. Thanks, uh, Dr. Rami Abu Bakr, who is the coordinator of this meeting, for his work regarding this meeting and all of his work regarding CME chapter in Egyptian Society of Israel. So I will leave the floor to Professor Hisham and ask him to start his talk. And we will uh, come back again to for questions after the end of the lecture. Please, Professor Hisham, start. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Yasser, my colleague and my friend, and my partner in dialysis techniques. You have a long experiences in that, and you have a CRRT and the AKI pioneer in the management with long story of that. I would like also to thank uh, uh, colleagues and friends on the Zoom meeting. I wish that this will be fruitful and will cover all your uh, inquiries about hemodial filtration and the other technique. I understand a lot of professors and colleagues are experts in the field of hemodial filtration. So please, uh, this is will be more simplified for juniors. I know that uh, your expertise is are beyond that, but let us go through such a journey in hemodial filtration, starting from the uh, different aspect and ending by recommendation or clinical trial. So let us go directly for that. And this is uh, our uh, clinical implementation of hemodial filtrations along the long experience uh, in our field we will have uh, this uh, disclaimer first the following slides are for educational purpose only and all data are available for further reading what about our agenda we will cover these topics more in details in some and more in a hurry in some because we have 130 slides ongoing so i will focus on some slides and just highlight another we will talk about water purification systems, basics of HDF techniques, the expanded hemodialysis versus hemodial filtration, how to choose dialyzers for fitting hemodial filtration, how to implement that in the clinical practice, and then we'll go to the our ancient university experiences in the reduction issues and the other publication, and we'll hide latestly by the uh, latest randomized control trials, including the list one of uh, starting from the Turkish, ending by the convention study. So 
What about first question? Why I have to implement hemodiaphyl filtration? As we know that the expansion of uremic toxins had beyond triple times the size of beta-2 microglobulin. We are not only focused on a small solids, we are not only focused on the middle molecules, but we are uh, probably focusing of very larger molecule that can ex extend to 50,000 Dalton. And if you look here, you can find that the small solids is not of clinical interest right now. However, we have to go directly to 25,000 and 50,000 for the kappa and lambda, which are considered right now iuremic toxin. So why to implement hemodiafiltration? Because we need to move forward for removing larger molecules that is related directly to patient morbidity, mortality, especially with the cardiovascular. And so we have a lot of toxins with larger molecular weight. We have an old cause mortality and the cardiovascular mortality and we have to implement HDF, especially in a personalized way. So a number of biologically explanation have been suggested for improved outcomes with HDF, including the removal of middle-sized molecules more effectively than high flux dialysis. Importantly, reducing inflammation and oxidative stress. The convection volume is still a key determinant of the outcome is cornerstones stones of treatment of hemodiafiltration, and you will come later. The aerobic toxins with high impact evidence scoring for comorbidities and mortality, including some of them could be removed, beta-2 microglobin, asymmetric dimethyl arginine, and the others, looking to the cytokines like interleukins, TNF, fibroblast growth factors. And on the second highest score, you can find additional uremic toxins that could be removed. So the target is going up and uplifting the molecular weight of uremic toxin that we should focus in removal of the patients. Going for that, we have a molecular weight and middle molecules. We have intradialytic morbidity. We have inflammation. We have intradialytic hypotension and oxidative stress. If you look to these five targets of treatment, you will find that hemodiafiltration is a potential benefit to remove all of that. Can have cardiovascular stability, can remove cytokines, can have more intradialytic control of blood pressure, can remove inflammatory disorders and intradialytic morbidity. So membrane innovation in dialysis will focus on the some of the uremic toxins according to the molecular weight on the left. We'll have just 11,000 for beta-2 microglobulin, but going up to 45,000 for other molecule. And its nanodiameter is increasing. So we need more of the permeable dialysis membrane to fit for removal of such big molecules. What about hemodiafiltration in Japan? It's grossly increasing over years. The number of patients going for hemodiafiltration in Japan is increasing too much. If you look for the 2009 and now 2018 and beyond, you can find that the majority of patients are doing hemodiafiltration. Hemodiafiltration schedule is related to the dose of hemodiafiltration could be related to the residual kidney function as well. For example, if you have a residual kidney function, you don't need in the target of a high convection volume, but in patient with loss of the residual kidney function, hemodiafiltration would be the optimum. KT over V as well could be controlled according to the residual kidney function and hemodiafiltration dose. Going to the first implementation of hemodiafiltration, we have to look to the water treatment stations. We have two stations, the standard stations, which is delivery of purified water. And then we have the central dialysate delivery system, 
and fully system developments recently in Egypt. However, it's 50 years ago in Japan. Water treatment is crucial and is critical in treating dialysis patients, not only in hemodial filtration as well, in even high flux hemodialysis. It is the largest syringe in medicine because a lot of fluids are injected into the patient directly. 120 liters in hemodialysis session, six to eight liters are infused internally as a pack filtration in high flux dialysis, 165 liters in post dilution and hemodial filtration, 25 liters are injected in the intravenous side, or 200 liters in pre-dilution hemodial filtration, where 50 liters are injected prior to the dialyzer inlet. So huge water is coming to the patients. Ultra pure water replacement is generated online. That's the name of online. So we have uh, no packs. We are generating the fluids online by filtering dial fluid through bacterial and endotoxin retention filters to prepare a sterile and biogen free solution that is immediately infused into the patient. The standard water components, which are common in uh, most of the clinical centers, composed of sand filter, carbon filter, softener, bacterial and tank, and UV lamp. So if you look to that, this could be harmful for patient on hemodial filtration, unless a strict control of the water treatment and endotoxin retention capacity will be high. In the past, it was using two stages RO in series, so it can remove endotoxins and micromolecules more efficiently. It was about 20 years ago when thinking about double RO stages. However, nowadays we are not using too much double RO stages because we have more endotoxin retention filters in each dialysis machine. Double RO system, meaning that if we have a feeding water from the coming from the water treatment, we have in parallel that uh, RO membrane, but pushing to an additional last RO membrane to go to the endotoxin lower limit for the uh, water treatment station. And this is double staging RO system. You need here a pump just to, to pumping from one RO to another one RO. Reverse osmosis, meaning that we reverse the physics of osmosis. The osmosis criteria, meaning that water permeates to the high concentration by osmotic pressure. However, using the RO system, pushing of the more purified water out to the uh, hemodialysis machine and rejected water coming with maximum solutes from directly from the drain of the reverse osmosis. So reverse osmosis could be as a traditional one, pressure gradient. The flow here in the standard hemodialysis units are very slowly and push that water into a tank. While in more modern dialysis units, have more on the direct RO, which means that pushing directly the water into the dialysis machine without tanks and will come into a second. And this is how we can have a municipal water or city water that go to the RO system, to the distribution circuit. However, if you put here the dialysis acid and base, you have to use to in serious endotoxin filter. Those endotoxin retention filter can induce that ultra pure or sterile. So you need one endotoxin filter to produce ultra pure dialysate and you need two endotoxin filter to produce sterile dialysate. The difference is in the component and of endotoxin retention 
and how much endotoxin in the dialysate, final dialysate. So substitution fluid typically in hemodia filtration need at least in series two hemodia filtration filter with endotoxin capacity very high. What's called the three barrier and the two barrier system? The three barrier system meaning that you have three endotoxin retention filter. You have one endotoxin filter and the second one endotoxin filter and a third one which is called ultra filter and this is disposable one just to coming with the tubing of substitution. So we have double filtration behind the hemodialysis machine and the terminal third ultra filter or endotoxin retention filter coming directly to the infusate. And this is typically the Paxter rule. In other machines, usually we have two sterilizing ultra filter or retention filter into toxin. One could be useful just for inlet of the dialysate, coming the dialysate with ultra pure criteria. But if you are going to inject with substitution fluid, you should have additional point here to go through to the pre or post dilutional mode in hemodial filtration. <clears throat> so anyone will have a hemodial filtration machine, they have to ensure that there is two endotoxin retention filter behind. The longevity of the endotoxin retention filter is around 100 session of hemodial filtration or three months. However, using disinfection frequently with chlorine damage the filter. So it is not recommended to use chlorine more than seven to 10 times disinfection cycles all over. Otherwise, the endotoxin filter would be uh, uh, leaking. The hemodialysis machine here does not check for the endotoxin retention capacity. It's only check for the integrity of the fibers. So what do you think about that if you are using 100 station? We have to control that uh, frequently with water treatment station to ensure that the least amount of bacteria and endotoxin are coming. So this is a guard, a final guard, but previous steps are also very high and important. So achieving a high quality water for ultra pure dialysate, you can find that here, the difference between ultra pure dialysate and the sterile dialysate is the same endotoxin value, which is 0.03 per milli endotoxin unit per milli. However, for sterilization of a dialysate, you have one per million bacteria instead here in the sterile and less than 0.1 bacteria in the ultra pure. So the difference between pores is the bacterial content, not the endotoxin content. Sterilization of the water treatment station is mandatory and should be done uh, routinely and regularly because bacterial, one bacteria can release tons of endotoxin by fragments. It is a filtration during uh, the filtration uh, process of the dialysate, and it depends on the membrane filtration. The important of that is the polysulfone membrane is the highest, which catch out the endotoxin from the water treatment station. Coming to the second part of water treatment station, which is called the modern water treatment station, which is a central concentrate supply or the central dialysate delivery system. All of them are equal in names. It depends on the uh, more automated water treatment station with a mixer that uh, mixes the acid concentrate and the piping that into directly into the dialysis machine. So you don't have here a canister for the acetate here for each individual machine. It's a group for all the, the, the dialysis units. It has a direct RO system. There is no tanks 
the direct flow RO system push directly the water into a mixer. And a mixer with an acid concentrate mixes the dialysate and push that to the piping inside the hemodialysis unit. If we go deeper on that, you can find here that if you have an RO and you have here a central supply system, mixing that with acid and paste sometimes, but here we are using acid. I don't like to have a bicarbonate liquid running in the tubing because fear of bacterial growth. And we have here distribution loop. So going to each machine directly from such a canister, big canister by gallons can supply a lot of hemodialysis machine. Usually direct RO system one can uh, feed up to 20 to 25 hemodialysis machine according to the uh, efficacy of the RO system. Again, this is a direct flow, meaning that you don't have tanks inside the water uh, treated uh, area. And if you look to behind the hemodial filtration machine, you can find here the connections between the in and the out. It's completely automated area here. You will not find the canister, but still you will need a bicarbonate pack. In our uh, clinical practice, we are using only acid uh, fluids. So we can use here a bicarbonate. This is the control, and this control can supply one or two machines at the unit. This is another one, which is called the mixer, and this mixer is uh, putting the uh, acid as uh, uh, sachets, and these pegs of acid concentrate are mixed together in a mixer. So we have a huge tank for an acid fluids that come into the pipes. And this mixer is not essential to be in the unit. You can have uh, either direct RO system, which push ultra uh, pure water directly to the dialysis machine, and you can use canister. But in our system, we have both. We have a direct RO system and a mixer with the acid concentrate. So direct feed RO, Direct design to no, dis no dead space, network interface, cart data recording, so you can control hygienic, individually replace membranes, control, and can be uh, a capacity up to 3,000 liters uh, per hour. Additional control box can self test the conductivity manual and automated parameters, detect all alarm for safety operation with an LEC display. Easy to use and very, very handy in clinical use. The problem of CDDS coming into two major problems. Number one, its reliability is required. As a single abnormality can affect multiple patients negatively. If you have a system failure, you may have at that time gross complications. Number two, you will not have flexibility in individualization of the canisters. So traditionally, the solids concentration is around the uh, calcium 1.5, for example, magnesium 0.5, potassium 2 millimole. So it is average, but if you need to change the formula, you have to shift it to canister based uh, dialysis. So, this is a, a very compact system, distribution loop, endotoxin free, very reliable. This again is the single pass patient dialysis fluid delivery. You need tanks, central concentrate delivery system. You have here a, a mixer, and you need to acid concentrate supply. And in the toxin retention uh, filter is common in that because all through the pathway, you may have endotoxin coming from the pipe. So this is a difference typically between what is common use, the single patient dialysis fluid delivery, using the tank, acid and uh, bicarbonate canisters, or central concentrate delivery. Here you can 
concentrate delivery system and full dialysis fluid delivery system. Uh, in Japan, they are uh, more uh, sophisticated in the water treatment. So again, it's the 0.03 of endotoxin of European guideline. The Japanese needing more endotoxin, lower endotoxin, which is around one per thousand EU milli. Why one per thousand? Because this is the least detectable limit. So if you have a more detectable limit, you will have lower than. So it is usually the endotoxin is nothing, no one. So the difference between 0.03 and 0.001 is a huge difference. This is a Japanese guideline. Another one developed in the automated machine during hemodialysis filtration, what is called development of fully automated dialysis system. The fully automated dialysis system, which meaning that using the pack filtration or substitution, to automate the priming, you don't need saline to prime, blood rinsing pack to end the dialysis and the rapid fluid replenishment process. So you don't need to put saline over the machine. The uh, very development automated dialysis system can prime, can rinse the uh, during the first uh, priming of the session, can rinse pack during the end of the session, and they can even give pushes of fluids if the patient develop hypotension or dialyzer clotting. So this is called, uh, many uh, of nephrologists may not be aware of that, it's called automated dialysis system, and uh, it's a great advantage to use all of that in a single dialysis machine. This is one of the diagram of the fully uh, automated dialysis system. The dialysis are pushed inside the filter so they can prime the filter or rinse back the filter by pack filtration force from this side. What about the clinical practice? I have, I have uh, my personally, I have two publications uh, exceeding uh, around 160 patients on the CDDS system. We measure both the direct endotoxin living and the indirect is the interleukin-6, and the difference between standard water treatment and central dialysate delivery system. We published that a uh, couple of years ago. We tested the interleukin-6 and the endotoxin level. We found that during uh, the CDDS-treated patients in one study that the endotoxin after is lower than expected. However, in regular hemodialysis machine, it is 0.15, so we need more careful about the regular hemodialysis uh, according to the endotoxin uh, level. Also, we found that uh, the uh, in this study, the endotoxin limitation is uh, lower than the standard dialysis treatment water stations. <coughs> Coming to uh, the basics of techniques, and this is the friendly, uh, acquired by uh, most of our uh, colleagues. But let me uh, give you some of my keys on, on the techniques. We all understand that it is higher in convection volume. It combines both in hemodial filtration, the diffusion and the convection, as exactly in high flux dialysis. However, the hemodial filtration mean augmented hemodial filtration convection volume. And the reduction ratio is related directly to the convection volume. The substitution is the important and the cornerstone of the success of hemodial filtration station. So it is a good utility related to the substitution volume. If you don't reach 23 liters per adult square meter surface area, you are not doing hemodial filtration but you are uh, doing a lot of cost without uh, clinical benefits. What is your requirement? We need a vascular access, good, sterile dialysate, automated control hemodialysis machines, and dialyzer 
fit for hemodial filtration. I think the last point is missing in many of nephrologists. We will focus later on. If you ask it yourself, what is the perception on clinical indication for hemodial filtration? I will answer that there is no contraindication of hemodial filtration. So if you are able to do all patients hemodial filtration, you are doing best. However, this is not the real life scenario. All over the world, it's about 20 to 25% of patients can fit for hemodial filtration. No guidelines critically indicate which patient. However, this is the nephrologist perception. Patient with dire cerebral amyloidosis, prefer neuropathy, hemodynamic instability, long vintage on dialysis, five or 10 years, patient with heart failure, patient with diabetes and the elderly. I think all can agree that this is a true indication to start hemodial filtration especially for patient hemodynamic uh, instability. Application for hemodial filtration can fit for the elderly. Be in mind that albumin loss and nutritional status, cardiac, diabetic, malnourished. Uh, our colleagues in the pediatric nephrology are doing hemodial filtration for all. And thanks for Professor Dr. Fatina is doing a great job in pediatric nephrology, 100% of their uh, child on dialysis are on hemodia filtration. However, if you can find that healthcare system cost, the practice, the population need, and you can personalize each patient accordingly. In all case scenario, we have to be adherent to the convection volume starting from uh, 1.73 liters per adult surface area. This is another prescription uh, from my uh, friend, uh, Professor Cano. Uh, in last publication, they said that, uh, and we discussed that with him in Milan, last Milan in era editor, they said that we can uh, initiate a prescription for naive patient doing hemodial filtration, and you can titrate it up the dose in one to three months and going to maintenance prescription with monitoring, fine tuning dialytic treatment dose to achieve the target result. So the 23 liters may not be uh, applicable at the start of hemodial filtration, but you can titrate up the dose uh, uh, after that. High volume hemodial filtration mode will combine both the convective, the diffusive, and pi compatibility. However, the post mode is more convective. The pre mode is less in diffusive because you push uh, around 30% of blood uh, coming into the dialyzer are actually a dialysate. In clinical practice, most patients are doing post-dilutional. However, we can use pre-dilutional if uh, you want to do uh, heparin-free uh, hemodial filtration technique for patients with GIT, hemorrhage, or cerebral uh, problem. <laughs> Successful high-volume hemodial filtration will depend on high blood flow, excellent vascular access, and ability to achieve adequate anticoagulation. This is a prescription. You can choose a dialyzer with a high sieving coefficient with lower serum albumin. You can use high molecular weight heparin as a syringe pump. But if you are using low molecular weight heparin, be sure that it is injected in the venous line because it's a low molecular weight. It's around from 4,000 to 5,000 molecular weight with the first pass into the hemodial filtration dialyzer, 30% will be lost during the first 
uh, pass uh, at the beginning of that. You need the 15 gauge needle because it's related to blood flow more around 400. Arterial pressure should not exceed the negativity of 200, otherwise hemolysis can occur. The convective volume should be uh, 23 liters. You can have a variance of sodium, potassium, calcium, bicarbonate, and glucose according to each individual patient. That's the common prescription. You have this uh, value, potassium 2 uh, millimole. You have a 1.5 millimole calcium bicarbonate in the range of 32. And you have to infuse it glucose as glucose are moving from the blood and hypoglycemia could happen. <laughs> so the uh, uh, in these stages, the uh, electrolyte prescription must be adjusted to patient need and the results. You have to check monthly lab tests. You have to uh, be sure that patient needs and the tolerance and their results. You can variable sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, picard for each uh, patient. Is it feasible option to routine clinical practice? Yes. However, we need more of the vascular access. Uh, Eighty-six percent of patients with arteriovenous fistula can have uh, a good blood flow taking into account the high blood flow needed for filtration fraction and hemodial filtration. And uh, the caster are less, only 33% can have uh, the target substitution. What we can do in such a case scenario is to prolong the dialysis session in patient with caster so they can target the high substitution. Otherwise, the four hours dialysis will not only one third of patients with permicath will get the uh, achievement of the substitution volume. In clinical life, this is a uh, carpet from the uh, DOPS. And you can, see, you can see that actually not more than 50% of patients in the DOPS are achieving the target goal of substitution. This may explain partially why some clinical uh, trials uh, are not able to identify the benefits of hemodial filtration over others. And other countries are doing more hemodial filtration. You can find that uh, Sweden, uh, France, and uh, going up uh, UK and Spain and more. However, in this slide, you can find that on this uh, uh, Dobsel survey, Many nephrologists are unknown how many the dose are giving. Some are giving up to 15 liters, something uh, above uh, 20 liters, but the majority are here. 50% only got this value. On the convince, we will come uh, later by the end of this talk, the convince with the uh, latest randomized control trial. The uh, important notice here in this trial, all patients are above 22 liters. So this is uh, one of the uh, clinical trials that put in mind that when analysis, the uh, substitution volume for all patients should exceeding that, and I will explain later. However, uh, I understand that uh, sustained hemodial filtration I like this terminology better than SLED in my previous talks. For patient needing uh, renal replacement therapy in, in ICU, you can use sustained hemodial filtration and CRRT. Sustained hemodial filtration, extended time up to 10 hour session and regular blood under Z flow rate, uh, you can control up to uh, 100 or 200 milli. And this in short clinical trial, the hemodial filtration against CRRT are comparable as usual. So you can find here uh, survival, total hospital stay, total ICU stay, uh, uh, hospitality, and the renal recovery, survival not uh, uh, as difference between both. <coughs> so this is an additional you may have uh, to implement 
uh, hemodial filtration in ICU as an alternative uh, pathway for uh, very expensive uh, CRRT session, but some patients actually need CRRT instead because it uh, may have an advantage of uh, 72 uh, hours continuously and dialyzer may absorb more of the cytokines or the endotoxin, especially with the newly developed hemofilter used in CRRT. But it's an, it's an additional option for sustained hemodiaphragmation. Coming to, uh, I think this is uh, expanded hemodialysis uh, uh, as against a hemodiaphragmation. Uh, to my opinion, it is a company talks because we have here uh, comparative analysis between HDX, which is expanded dialysis using the median cut of uh, Theranova filter against the high mode IR filtration, which is uh, by additional companies. Uh, to the theory, expanded hemodialysis is feasible as well to be used and comparable result between uh, hemodial filtration and HDX. However, there is no long term data on HDX and the alpha loss uh, is extended in HDX uh, techniques. So it could be of uh, not of value. The techniques of HDX and hemodial filtration are different. In hemodial filtration, you have using the transmembrane pressure. However, in medium cut off, you don't use any of transmembrane pressure. You are using a medium cut off. You rely here in hemodial filtration on transmembrane pressure dragging. However, in expanded by very porous dialysis medium cut off membrane, you can remove by permeability, while in hemodial filtration removal by permeability and the pressure gradient. So quantification is needed. However, we have a quantification uh, is calculated in hemodial filtration. More randomized control trial is needed in HEDX. We have some randomized control trial on long-term benefits of hemodial filtration. So in systemic review to compare the outcome uh, between HDX and hemodial filtration in patients with end-stage kidney disease, according to uh, most of the literatures saying that both can achieve the same target of removal of uremic toxins. I am here talking about large uremic toxins, not small uremic toxins. Both are equivalent in that, especially if you are using a specific dialyzer for hemodial filtration. If you are using that comparative, so globally, you can achieve the target between HEDX and hemodial filtration. I'm very interested in such uh, uh, molecules, especially alpha-1 microglobulin. We recently published uh, data about that, but these, uh, uh, a lot of uh, hemodial filtration auto substitution and HEDX, you can even exceed the expanded dialysis in removal lead if you exceed the uh, blood flow and uh, exceeding that the dialyzer permeability. However, both are equivalent. If you are doing that, it's okay. If you are going to uh, move toward expanded dialysis, be aware of the albumin loss. So here you can find a lot of publication uh, sponsored by uh, Paxter Hipscale Corporation because Sierra Nova is a Paxter. And you can find a very comparative results according to the blood flow treatment duration. And here you find beta 2 microglobin. So kappa and lambda, FEG, F23, YKL, the 40 protein, which is an inflammatory uh, biomarker. If you look to this graph, you cannot say that HEDX is inferior to hemodial filtration, but you cannot on the same way saying that hemodial filtration is inferior. Both are in parallel. You have to do uh, any one of them, but take care of uh, HEDX. We have no long-term uh, survival. <laughs> Coming to uh, last two points in my talk, Actually, if you ask it me, this is uh, my favorite, how to choose dialyzers, and especially this dialyzer to fit hemodial filtration. In Enchamps University, we are using 
uh, dialyzer, very big dialyzer, 2.2 for hemodial filtration. We have to think about Cano and Davenport. Uh, we have discussed uh, one year ago that we have the dialyzer choice should have adopted for high blood flow, should have higher purification and saving, should have mm -hmm. lower internal resistance because clogging and filtration uh, clotting will happen. So the internal diameter should be 200 micron and above. By the rule of thumb, if you are using dialyzer, you can apply 200 QP per square meter. For example, if you are using dialyzer 2.0, you can use up to 400 milli per minute blood flow rate. So it's like a rough equation, but it is uh, uh, of clinical practice that 200 milli uh, per minute blood flow QP for each one square meter of the dialysis. Uh, the purification value is de determined by the sieving. The internal resistance and the clocking is determined by the dialyzer internal filtration and internal diameter. Here is some of the clinical literature we go uh, uh, for the differences of uh, river clear, polyflux, Zavonta, Elysio, Cordax. And you can find that here for whom the same company, you have a different sieving coefficient. So if you are uh, comparing Paxter, polyflux, and river clear, you will find that river clear has higher myoglobin sieving comparing to polyflux. And this is suitable for removal of cytokine, and this more suitable for doing hemodial filtration. And if you control that between two other from the same companies, you can find that here, the sieving coefficient of myoglobin 0.5, and this sieving coefficient is 0.1. So it is not a company, it is a type of dialyzer inside at least each company. To my opinion, we have to use higher sieving coefficient of myoglobin, to remove cytokines, we have to use uh, internal diameter wider, and it is coming in the next slide. Here you can find the sieving coefficient criteria on the clinical ex vivo study between different, as well uh, other uh, types of dialyzer in hemodials and hemodial filtration. Patient with myeloma can have a free light chain uh, removal rate by hemodial filtration, don't be panic. Hemodial filtration with high permeable dialysis can treat patient with AL amyloidosis and higher uh, kappa and lambda uh, free light chain. You don't need a median cutoff or high cutoff, which is obsolete. No other uh, high cutoff are available. And you can find here the uh, loss of albumin. Uh, usually, some dialyzers have higher albumin loss during hemodial filtration may reach three gram per session. Others may be around 1.5 and others uh, less than one gram. It depends on the dialyzer uh, permeability. The changing phase of dialyzer membrane and dialyzer by Davenport, increasing the convection volume and ensuring a filtration fraction between 25 and less than 30. The filtration fraction meaning that the ultrafiltration rate divided on the blood flow rate. For example, if you are doing hemodial filtration and doing uh, 100 milli uh, per minute of the ultrafiltration on a blood flow 300, so the filtration would be very high, three, uh, 330 percent. We have to do that in below 30 and better to around 25. And this is uh, automated by the dialysis machine. So in order to achieve a high hemodial filtration dose and the convection dose, you have to increase the blood flow so the filtration fraction is in the accepted range. The dialyzer membrane as well, you have to need such a forum. Davenport is an agreement. Uh, I agree with them, and you can have to choose higher membrane to remove more of the cytokines starting from the 17,000 and up to 45,000 delta. Additional point in my practice and innovation in that field, 
that the hydrophilicity of the internal diameter and the blood clogging inside the filter during dialysis, you'll find a lot of protein deposition. And this huge protein deposition will be very appeared على الهيموديال فلتريشن تكنيك ان بوست دايلوشن هيموديال فلتريشن بيكوز بروتين لاير ار ديبوزيتد اند اوبستراكتينج ذا بورز سو ذا ماشين تراي تو دو مور الترا فلتريشن اند فيلير اند ذيس از ذا كومنست كوز اوف فيلير اوف بوست دايلوشن هيموديال فلتريشن يوزينج دايلسيس ميمبرين ويتش ار مور هيدروفاليك Uh, smooth like an endothelium is important to choose that dialyzer in hemodial filtration because clogging and uh, protein deposition will be less than, for, for example, this uh, uh, alternative way of a dialyzer in hemodial filtration clogged the porosity within a couple of hours when starting uh, hemodial filtration in both the dilution mode. So this is the hydrophilic filtration and filtration fraction is important. And here in the coming uh, slides, the difference in the internal diameter, you can find huge internal diameter, 220. We have 200. Here is 185. This is internal filtration. This is a small for hemodial filtration. And this is a uh, good and fit for hemodial filtration. So fitting that with internal diameter. So the prescription of hemodial filtration, the extracorporeal blood flow management, blood flow uh, fit, as we uh, said before, that uh, 200 per 1.0 square meter of dialyzer surface area that equate about uh, 40, 400 milli per minute for a 2.0 square meter dialyzer is required. The internal diameter, again, is crucial to maintain a smooth blood flow, no protein clogging, no clotting techniques are here activated and very smooth against a high shear stress here could happen, but importantly, protein absorption or what's called protein cake during hemodial filtration. So we have to use a suitable sieving coefficient sufficient to remove middle molecules. KOF above 50 milli our perimeter mercury, low internal blood flow resistance, wider dialyzer is better, and internal diameter 200 uh, micro. Sieving coefficient is different between different dialyzer. If you have read the manufacturer data coming from the internet, and you can find there is a lot of difference between, for example, platinum FX, polyflux, and uh, FX Cordex you can find the difference. All are nearly equal in beta-2 microglobulin, which is 11,000. However, myoglobin, which is 17,000, you can uh, agree difference, starting from 0.1 for FX, 0.5, Cordax, Polyflux, uh, Cordax, and uh, uh, others, and ending by Superflux here, 0.7. The median cutoff is huge sieving, for myoglobin reaching 0.9. So 0.9 is huge for hemodiafiltration. That's a rule. Don't use Theranova or medium cut off dialyzer in hemodiafiltration. It's used in hemodialysis because the sieving of myoglobin is 0.9 and huge albumin loss will be more than uh, seven gram or eight gram. Some clinical trial was done in COVID era to remove more of cytokines, but it is not in clinical practice right now. So you need very smooth blood flow. You need less clotting. You need to uh, aggravate the blood flow. You can do uh, monitoring of that with the time. Time is a fixed value. Don't uh, go before four hours. <laughs> and you have to use a sophisticated hemodia filtration with pet. Uh, uh, feedback control. The feedback control differ between two companies. Some are using transmembrane pressure during hemodial filtration. So we have a balance when once you have a high transmembrane pressure associated with large uh, volume cause unstable treatment. 
So aiming for best, which is called auto substitution. The machine decide what the volume of substitution according to the trans membrane pressure. As a rule of thumb, the filtration fraction should not exceed 25%. The ultra control is for Paxter. It, uh, it uses another technology, but with the same concept and auto substitution by Virginis. Both of them control the hemodial filtration dose in order to have a safe extracorporeal circuit. Both of them are uh, uh, available and can uh, increasing the transmembrane pressure can uh, be avoided. One of the uh, remarks that in some automated hemodial filtration is called pack filtration on demand, meaning that if the transmembrane pressure increased and the protein fouling happened or collocking or collocking of proteins, the machine push dilates from outside to inside and stop ultrafiltration. So cleaning up the internal side of a filter. This is called pack filtration on demand. So pack filtration on demand, the dilated pack flush the proteins on the inner surface of the hollow fiber. Again, it depends on the transmembrane pressure recorded by the dialysis machine. So auto substitution plus system, it's more, uh, more than just another automated, very precise, several checks of the pressures, automatically activated at the start, and auto substitution can control the volume of hemodial filtration. On the other hand, the ultra control mode automatically tests for the optimal TMB pressure and subsequently control the uh, dialyzer geometry and the clotting. And this is the panel. I'll not go through inside the technique for the sake of the time, but this is the commonest panel. Be, uh, be aware that of transmembrane pressure. Here in uh, some clinical literature and studies, I, as you can see here, the transmembrane pressure is increasing rapidly after first hour of the starting of the session and it's going up. So this is uh, important to keep the TMB below 300 millimeter mercury. Uh, actually, we don't use that. <clears throat> what about the clinical research in Anchams University? We have reduction ratio and we have long uh, uh, series of uh, clinical studies and the monitoring process. Again, we are using a huge dialyzer, 2.0 and above. We are using sieving coefficient of 0.5 of myoglobin and above. We're continuously monitoring the transmembrane pressure. And if you can see in this graph, when you are using bigger surface dialyzer, you can have lower uh, uh, development of transmembrane pressure. So this is a 2.2 and 1.8 from the same company and the same dialyzer. But if you are used 2.2 instead of 1.8, you will have a slightly lower transmembrane pressure. Some companies has higher transmembrane pressure. This depends on the UF or the uh, protein clogging. We have here demonstrated a reduction ratio for adequacy, not only of urea, but also for the beta-2 microglobulin we can have a beta-2 microglobin achieved around 80% in patients on hemodial filtration. It's around 67% in high flux dialysis. So we can get some benefits around 20% or more, 25% when using hemodial filtration against high flux dialysis. We published that uh, probably five years ago on the DNA methylation and epigenetic changes. We didn't find a, a reduction of endoxyl sulfate with hemodial filtration, but interestingly, we find that hemodial filtration improve the DNA methylation. And very interestingly, on sub-analysis, we found that DNA methylation is better when you achieve a higher target of a substitution. And this is a unique study all over the world that which documented that a patient on long-term hemodial filtration, if you reach the substitution volume above 23, 
you will have the maximum protection of the epigenetic changes with the uremic milieu. You can get uh, such that uh, by a substitution volume. <coughs> also, we studied the thrombin antithrombin uh, complex, and thrombin antithrombin complex is generated during hemodialysis or hemodial filtration uh, as uh, inflammation, as coagulation, as a blood membrane interaction, a lot of things that can have. We, have, we, we understand that antithrombin, and if you have a thrombin, antithrombin complex, you mean that you have an activated coagulation pathway. All dialyzer have a higher uh, thrombin antithrombin complex with increasing around 80% from the start of dialysis. And this is uh, exactly uh, in two uh, commonly used dialyzer, the CT score or the coagulation score are equivalent and non-significant because both of them activate the thrombin antithrombin complex. We also uh, recently published uh, the hemodialysis against hemodial filtration for asymmetric dimethyl arginine against tumor necrosis factor. We find that uh, there is removal rate of asymmetric dimethyl arginine and TMF greater in hemodial filtration uh, rather than the uh, high flux, although could be achieved the both of them in high flux, but the greater achievement and reduction ratio are more with hemodial filtration. Uh, last year, also about FEGF2311 and the cardiovascular calcification, we found that in uh, hemodial filtration, we can achieve even very huge molecule FGF23 removal from uh, hemodial filtration against high flux. It's better in hemodial filtration for sure. And the reduction ratio could achieve very uh, critical and important reduction ratio with good substitution fluids for hemodial filtration dose. Alpha 1, microglobin, I expected that it would be published, I uh, did a clinical study five years, four years ago on alpha-1 microglobulin because I read a lot of that, but uh, nowadays this table is available. So one alpha-1 microglobulin is around 30,000 uh, Dalton. It is related to inflammation. It is coming from the liver. It has uh, benefits of removing uh, uh, oxidation and it can act as antioxidant. However, once produced by the liver, it is oxidized, and so we have to remove by hemodial filtration, optimizing the production again from the liver. This is a scenario. It is not directly a toxin, but it's a ca catching the antioxidant character, and so we have to promote the liver for more production. Uh, using superflux uh, by other uh, studies uh, in Anshamsi University published uh, last year with the ASN week, and we did a lot of reduction ratio on the following kappa alpha-1 microglobulin. We can achieve 40% reduction, lambda-29, uh, uh, interleukin-6, and the procalcitonin. All can be achieved. The difference here between high flux and the hemodial filtration. So uh, this is just a biomarker, not a long-term study. The albumin loss is in our uh, intensive research the maximum albumin loss happened at the first start of the dialysis, one hour, but the cumulative albumin loss is around two gram per session. So it's accepted. The Japanese saying that up to three gram is okay. Why they put the three gram? Because it's a physiologic production by the liver. So if you can remove uh, up to three gram per session, it's okay for you, provided that the nutrition support is fine and you can eat uh, well. Uh, on uh, uh, 2019, I was honored to present one of our study with my colleague, Magdi Sharawi, according to the sclerostin level and bone specific alkaline phosphatase, high flux uh, against hemodial filtration. We find lower value of sclerostin, 27% reduction in the HDF group after three months, but not affecting the bone specific alkaline phosphatase. This means that sclerostin has a double face. I understand there's a double face between bone and cardiovascular calcification. But even if it's a devil, we can remove by hemodial filtration. 
I will go fast for the uh, latest randomized control trial. I will focus here on, and uh, I would thank uh, uh, my friend, Professor uh, Pernal Cano for uh, supplying me with these slides. We talk about that in Milan and here in Egypt one week ago. Uh, contrast, Turkish, uh, Catalonian, and French chief study for the elderly. Uh, some improvement in the all-cause mortality and the cardiovascular mortality using hemodial filtration. And if you see here, this is a standard conviction volume. I would say that the 23 liters you can get benefit, and this is described uh, very efficient in the uh, Catalonian study. However, the convinced study uh, reached around 90% of patients reaching the 23 uh, liter per session. And if you look here, what is favored, high dose hemodial filtration pattern, all cause, all -cause mortality uh, uh, improved, but cardiovascular, no, there is no difference in diabetes and other males or females, but uh, at least all cause mortality are better. Interestingly, this has happened during the uh, COVID pandemic, but patients on hemodial filtration are doing better uh, during COVID uh, pandemic, and even immune response by vaccination are better in hemodial filtration group against high flux dials. So this is the convince with reaching uh, 23 liters. And this is uh, uh, published uh, three or four months ago from the uh, New England Journal. It was uh, a pragmatic studies controlling hemodial filtration against hemodialysis. And uh, it's extending for uh, three years. The hemodial filtration ensuring the convection volume is above uh, 23 liters. All core mortality had been improved, but not cardiovascular uh, uh, death. Probably there is a, a lot of patient died with COVID, but uh, on uh, discussion with Cano say that they cannot differentiate between cardiovascular death or uh, from uh, COVID death during the pandemic. Uh, it is a parallel study hemodial filtration against hemodialysis. Uh, nearly equal in both. Hemodial filtration, all cause mortality is better, reducing that by around uh, 23%. Uh, However, the cardiovascular death and others, infection and the hospitality, was, uh, hospital admission was better, but fatal or non fatal cardiovascular uh, event are equal, cardiovascular death are non significant. Death from infection including COVID-19, are better in hemodial filtration group, as well as the immune uh, uh, response. Hospitalization are nearly uh, uh, equal. And this is the conclusion from uh, seven clinics, 17 clinics that are very people-prone, resilient and academic, different techniques, study designs, uh, 1,360 divided into both hemodial filtration Interesting, more than 23 liters as the Catalonian one. Improving in that as described uh, earlier. And uh, all cause mortality improved, but unfortunately cardiovascular death was not uh, superior. Decrease of all cause mortality by 23%. Uh, high dose uh, hemodial filtration against high flux. Uh, so they concluding that High volume hemodial filtration is feasible with the target convective volume as achieved as the majority, 90% of the convents. I was never associated with any safety issue like fever, uh, uh, volume discrepancy, was well tolerated patient dropout from the study was similar in both groups. So they concluded that as, uh, as I said, that they are struggling between HEDX and HEDF. Uh, for us as a nephrologist, both are equivalent in performance, but here they are going step by step HEDX against HEDF. So, uh, uh, dear colleagues and friends, I'm sorry to be uh, more or less late, but I wish that I can cover a lot of uh, things, uh, a lot of uh, slides. I was deleted uh, this morning because it exceeds a, a huge number of slides. Probably we can discuss it later. And uh, we conclude that implementing 
Hemodial filtration should be focused on individual patient needs and would be the best dialysis if we can ignore the cost. High volume hemodial filtration versus high flux hemodialysis can have a better outcome and better patient tolerability, reducing all cause of death by different mechanisms, decreasing the stress, intradiuretic stress of machines, dialysis, dialysate, oxidation, volume, uh, ultrafiltration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hisham, for this highly illustrative talk about hemodial filtration. It was really a very comprehensive one, including nearly all the necessary data to implement hemodial filtration uh, on a wide based clinical background, starting from the water treatment necessary for uh, hemodial filtration and different parts of your water treatments, how uh, to use these different parts and why. Uh, you, uh, spread use of these uh, systems in Ain Shams University, how to control, how to uh, manage this uh, control system in by easy hands, uh, going to clinical implementation of uh, hemodial filtration. And I really enjoyed uh, one of, the, I think, most important uh, items or uh, points you said in this uh, topic that there is no contraindication for uh, hemodia filtration, which is an important point and a way to implement widespread use of this technique. Also, uh, all, all of the uh, the system needed for hemodia filtration, especially how to calculate the substitute, how to use the substitute, what's the appropriate substitute, how to manage purification of this substitute, even bacteria content reaching to ultra, even super ultra pure, uh, yes. uh, also membrane part which is a very important part how to choose the proper membrane aiming to reach to the ideal results regarding this uh, exactly. I would like to thank you really for this illustrative uh, uh, part about the studies all of the studies passing from nearly all of the studies about HDF reaching up to the last one from Vince trial which was published in the last uh, era congress in Milan, Milan and yes. New England Journal of Medicine, and is now can be present in the New England Journal of Medicine. What is the importance of this uh, uh, study? Uh, putting a very landmark for the uh, usefulness of hemodia filtration in comparison to other modes of uh, hemodialysis. Uh, yeah. I, 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 for me, I, I, I would like uh, to see that they, they remove the slides <laughs> if you have. <laughs> and you can. <laughs> uh, would be much more interesting. Uh, I would say a secret. I keep, I keep a final and the brief final. So the brief final is still have a lot of slides. Uh, probably we can uh, open the the gate for uh, more talks uh, later on. Yes. Uh, let me let, let me see. In our uh, some uh, private discussions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have a question about membranes. Uh, if we cannot reach uh, the ideal membrane you described in your uh, talk, so how to compensate for this to reach the proper results? Is there any way for manipulation of the technique, or nothing? You are to stick to the parameters, the membrane parameters you mentioned. Uh yeah, it's a very good question because you have to apply that on clinical practice, uh, unless it's uh, unavailable. But if, if uh, for for my side, all are uh, available, but uh, saving coefficient, you cannot you, you cannot by any way uh, ignore the saving coefficient of a dialyzer fit for hemodial filtration, because you are doing hemodial filtration to remove much of cytokines and inflammatory cytokines and the big molecules up to kappa and lambda light chain alpha-1 microglobulin, FEG, F23. And so if you are doing hemodial filtration, we have to prepare ourselves first uh, by a good dance membrane. The problem is if you are using the same membrane, but you cannot reach the substitution volume due to low blood flow mm. or uh, caster, you have to extend the time simply. Yes. So uh, let me go one question of the chat uh, for this point, the time. 
فروم دكتور احمد الحسيني كان وي يوز اتش دي اف ليس ذان 24 اورز وات يور اوبينيون واتس مين باي ليس ذان 24 اورز ذيس از ذا كويستشن اي وونت يو انسر 24 اورز ها يا اي دونت اند اوكي يو كان يو كان يوز هيمو دايفلتريشن ان ذا ريجولر دايرسيس تايمينج فور اور 6 اورز يو كان دو سستين هيمو دايفلتريشن يو كان يوز 10 hours or 12 hours like a sled techniques but uh, 24 hours you cannot use the 24 hours because i, I think I, I think he is mistaken for crrt hdf in crrt he is speaking about this he's uh, speaking uh, about uh, hdf uh, technique in crrt but you are uh, you're talking about uh, hdf in regular hemodialysis patients with the usual and sustained time. hemodial filtration in critical in, in icu you can use it as uh, some this uh, is the point of the question Uh, I have many questions on the chat. You will answer some of them for sure. You <laughs> <laughs> uh, can hear from a uh, professor here, Professor Saeed. I, I don't see. Yes. Uh, I'm not here. Uh, 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 from uh, Dr. Uh, any difference between the two modalities in inflammatory condition or ISA dose? Yes, it had been published uh, years ago. That uh, patient on hemodial filtration will require less ESA doses because mm -hmm. of uh, inflammation. Again, it depends on your prescription. So if you are using the right way, the right dose, and the right dialyzer membrane, you can have a better outcome. You can have a lower ESA doses and less inflammatory uh, reaction. Let me just uh, to highlight that beta two microglobin it is not the major task because beta two microglobin should be change it have its face before attacking to the synovial membrane the changing face of beta 2 microglobin coming by glycation coming by cytokines to invade there and doing osteoarthrosis so uh, cytokines removal is mandatory plus uh, beta 2 microglobin okay. professor said khamis wants to comment Uh, thank you, Professor Hisham, for this uh, very uh, elegant presentation, as usual. For sure, thank you, Professor Yasser. You, you, are, you, are my, you are always my pack. I, I feel happy when you are here. <laughs> okay, let me believe. Okay. <laughs> uh, just I would like to ask you, uh, Professor Hisham, uh, about some basic information in this hemodial filtration. I know you are uh, ushered to this in uh, at the beginning that many of our uh, professors here right now hearing you or listening to you, they know many of these uh, basic facts uh, by heart. Yes. But we are, uh, our aim, as you know, to, to educate or to teach our uh, junior colleagues. Yes, exactly. So, Okay, so could you please just uh, uh, put, uh, if you don't mind, put a definition for these uh, following items? You can, you can, if you don't mind, write down what I, I mean because it is almost six or. I will seven answer items. one by one. <laughs> okay, let us start with internal hemodial filtration. What is meant by this? <laughs> yes, internal hemodial filtration was a fake because yeah. if you are using a smaller lumen. Internal diameter, 185. You have a pushing plot inside with a huge pressure inside yeah. the lumen. So you are forcing the filtrate or ultrafiltrate to outside. And subsequently, you have an automated machine. You have a pack filtration as an equilibrium. So internal, it is a marketing. It's a marketing internal uh, hemodial filtration. It was believed at that time as a marketing tool to optimize the use of the 185 internal diameter, but the same company, after a while, couple of years, produce what is suitable for HDF by wider lumen. So you can ignore that it was 15 years ago, and uh, I think it's not uh, valid uh, right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, regarding the boost and debris, you, are, you already highlighted. What is meant yeah. by mixed versus mid dilution? Yes, and some, and some Japanese are using uh, the mid dilution. You are pushing substitution inside the mid. In uh, mix it in some clinical practice and some dialysis machine, you can uh, have the software of the dialysis machine to say, as an uh, 20% will infuse pre dilution 
and 80% will infusate post dilution. So we have a blood uh, a substitution line that connected pre and post dialyzer, and the uh, machine can control. I, I, I'm not I'm not uh, uh, so happy by that uh, because you can use either pre or post. Don't conflict yeah. it. Yes. So uh, the fourth one is hemodial filtration with endogenous reinfusion. What's meant by this? Is this a back filtration? That, that is uh, literally the, the, the same as back filtration. Yes. It's a marketing okay. as well. It's, a, it's not something. It's, it's a back filtration. Yeah. Last one, maybe it is already also obsolete or not yet anymore. The push and pull hemodial filtration. Yeah, push and pull. I don't hear about push and pull. Um, probably uh, 10 years. It's a very sophisticated uh, process and uh, pushing and pulling the substitution fluids, but uh, I don't read about that uh, from ten years ago, because yeah. uh, it it was written at the start from the hemodial filtration twenty years ago, and uh, cannot uh, be on uh, on practice uh, right yeah. now in Europe or uh, in uh, even in the Gulf area. Okay, last question. Uh... It is a philosophic a little bit. Uh, what is removed? I mean, any any devil uremic toxin. What is removed is that means we uh, the outcome is okay after removal of this uh, toxin, or uh, there is no any studies about this. Uh, you touch a very good point between reduction ratio and how this is translated into a, a fruitful outcome. You yeah. understand that the uremic toxin we have to identify four steps. You, will, you you should identify for a step. One step you can uh, you can lab, you can test this uh, material or this solid. Number two, you have to find that it is uh, higher than a neuremic uh, rather than a normal individual. Yeah. Number three, it should be related directly to two uh, pathological uh, injury like endothelium, heart, brain, or whatever. Number four, it should be, and this is the problem. Number four, it should be related of the clinical improvement after removal. So these yeah. are traditional four steps of uremic toxin uh, definition. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, the answer is blind. We have a lot, for example, p sulfate, and others are linked to uh, endothelial injury or uh, cardiovascular death. But you cannot say that in removing that will improve. Uh, another one, the asymmetric dimethyl arginine is a very potent mm. inhibitory of nitric oxide. Yeah. Yes, it is that chemically, but how it's translated, translated to the outcome, you will not find that. Overall, all cause mortality and the cardiovascular mortality is feasible to analyze on long-term immune filtration alone. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we enjoyed really this very, very, very illustrative uh, presentation. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. A question, Professor. Thank you, Professor Saeed. Professor Hisham, question from Dr. Abdel Hamid Amin about any major difference regarding uh, medication dose and medication removal by dialysis or HDF. Yes, it's it's oh. it's a differ. Yes, it differs. For oh. example, if you are using vancomycin or other, uh, on the on the pharmaceutical, they don't know exactly. The pharmacokinetics on the high dialysis may permeability, but there is some significant drugs that can be removed, although they said first, no dose modification. I will highlight that vancomycin. Uh, but the difference between high flux and hemodial filtration is tangible. So any high permeable dialysis, high flux with superflux, hemodial filtration, you have to recheck back the uh, drug dosing on the uh, car. Any okay. any protein bound uremic, any, any protein bound antibiotics, uh, uh, which is the majority of them, will not be uh, removable. But some antihypertensive drugs, for example, you have uh, uh, ARBs uh, are not dialyzable, like ACE inhibitor, uh, beta blocker are not equal, uh, calcium channel is inferior on than ARBs in dialyzability. So uh, each drug will will need revision. And I think in the practice of nephrology, all 
we cannot say uh, generalized recommendation for drug, uh, even those adjustment or something like this. Uh, you are not uh, to know them by heart. You are you can't simply check. Uh, the this drug clearance, this drug admo, those adjustments. Yes, booklet type of virus. We are not. We are. We are not. You uh, You know them by heart and uh, uh, repeat them when needed. We, you are, it's to be checked once needed and get the proper dose according to your proper situation. That especially that we have usually not a single factor. Usually, maybe uh, hemodial filtration in a liver patient, in uh, or the patient is adjusted for uh, taking IV fluids or special type, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with the usual daily care in the hospital. Uh, uh, another question. So, Professor, Dr. Uh, Professor Mohammed Abdel Bari uh, wants to comment. السلام okay. عليكم وعليكم السلام وحشنا كثير بشكرك جدا دكتور هشام فور ذيس اند اليجنت ليكتشر فيري انفورماتيف وبشكر دكتور ياسر على الكونتينيشن بتاع الميديكال اديوكيشن دوت وربنا يبارك فيك الكومنت بتاع الدكتور هشام زي ما حضرتك قلت ان احنا لو نقدر نعمل لكل الناس نيمو ده فلتريشن ات ويل بي ا فيري جود اتشيفمنت لكن احنا طبعا ما بنقدرش وزي ما حضرتك قلت برضه ان حوالي 20% على مستوى العالم وكده هم بس اللي بيعملوا، فاحنا بن دايما بنواجه مشكله ان البيشنت بيشوف مكنه جديده و و و و فاشمعنى ده محطوط ومشمعنى ده محطوط. اي كان فيل يور اي كان فيل يور بوتشر يا اه انا لسه بس هكمل النقطه ما انا انا جبت السؤال بتاعك عايزين رول ان احنا مثلا زي ما حضرتك قلت الناس الكاردياك الناس الاولد الناس المال نورش الناس اللي احنا بنحس ان هم داخلين مثلا على اميلودوزس الناس كده بنسلكت وبنحطهم في مراكز ثانيه عشان خاطر تبقى بيحس ان هو ممكن يبقى فير شويه يقوم يعمل ايه وانس ويك ايوه انا ده, ده اللي انا كان قصدي على سؤالك فهل ده انا دايما بعترض بقول يعني مش هتستفيد انت من الهيموداتيشن بالطريقه ديت وهيبقى استهلاك على الفاضي وحياتك عارف طبعا احنا بنعاني من اللاينز و و و و وكل الكلام فمش عارف ايه راي حضرتك هل وانس ويك و تو ويكس هاي فلاكس فلتر ده له اي ساينتفيك او حتى غير ساينتفيك بيزك نو نو اي ديسكاس ذات ما لا 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 اي ديسكاس ذات مع بيرنا كانو كان بروبابلي 7 اور 8 ييرز اجو ذات ذا اتش دي اف دوز بير سيشن اند بير ويك Even 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 in literature, they calculated that around 70 liter per week substitution. Uh, nothing saying that once per week will improve. Uh, even in the long term studies or short term studies, they are doing uh, thrice weekly. Even in our study for sclerostin and the other uh, DNA methylation, they are using we are using three times per week hemodiafiltration. So patient either do hemodiafiltration or don't do hemodiafiltration. Okay. Mm. Okay. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed. A question from Dr. Masoud Khairi about. Uh, Professor Faisal is here or? Uh, yes. Uh, improved paresthesia of amyloidosis in long standing hemodi uh, hemodialysis patient. High hemodial filtration different regarding this point. Clinical improvement. Yes, clinical on. improvement. Uh, as I said, that. Uh, beta 2 microglobin needs cytokines to be the position. And cytokines play the major role, not beta 2 microglobin. Even, even if you uh, compare low flux with high flux, that's it. in pre beta 2 microglobin, the difference is not huge. Confine 20 and 23, for example. So, does it improve? Yes, it improves, but better it is to prevent. Because what is deposited already will not be removed. But you can remove cytokines and inflammation associated with uh, uh, neuropathy or a disabling condition. Okay, thank you. A uh, question from our moderator today, asking the usual question regarding usual uh, the cut off uh, point for blood pressure uh, to use uh, 
patient not fit for intermittent hemodialysis in post septic and the cardiogenic shock or eutropics and especially patient only fit for CVV HDF or HDF. Uh, I think he uh, needs uh, another story yes, to find that uh, the difference, and it's your play, okay. uh, it's yes. your game. Uh, but if if I want to uh, just uh, to answer uh, between CRRT and sustained hemodial filtration, uh, the difference is not high uh, in all the uh, randomized control trial. But yes. but my feeling, my feeling, my my, my heart feeling that. If you have a patient with septicemia, endotoxemia, CRRT will better uh, fill. This this leads me to a question I want to ask, and I think this is the place. Your study you showed us about difference between uh, CRRT and HDF, and where all differences were significant. I can't find any item in this study uh, related to uh, hemodynamic stability, which is the major advantage of hemo uh, CRRT in critical care situation. So it's a, yes, yes, it's a, it's a sustained uh, hemodial filtration will be more or less equivalent, sustained hemodial filtration, not slit. I'm not talking about yes, low efficient hmm. uh, uh Both of them will uh, be of the same outcome. Even as you know, Professor Yasser, you are a pioneer in this area of uh, dialysis in ICU. Uh, you understand that even all the clinical trial did not find a major advance between both or when to start early or late. You have to individualize each patient according to the uh, facility and your expertise and patient's hemodynamic stability. Okay, uh, but I think uh, still CRRT uh, will be in the major player in cases of hemodynamic instability. Sure, and sure, I, sure. I can, I, I can get from the questions that the audiences uh, are- Professor Faisal uh, is yes, uh, yes, with we'll us online. will comment, but, but, but I can't get, I want to, to break this point, that uh, there is conflict in the audiences between HDF that we are speaking about now regarding chronic hemodialysis patient and HDF, CVV HDF in acute settings. Some questions. Is it another scenario? No, 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 no. It's another, another scenario. This is another is a story totally. We are speaking. Uh, CVV HD and the other is a CRRT techniques. Yes, yes. We are speaking. Just to clarify that in this session, we are speaking about the use of HDF as a method of hemodialysis, not that used in acute settings as a CRRT one of not the Not continuous renal replacement cell. Yes, yes, yes. Just to clarify this for the audiences, as I can get for the from some questions. Professor Faisal, please. Uh, thank you, Yasser. Uh, I enjoy uh, the, the talk, which is excellent. Hisham, as usual, you, you are thank one you, of prof. the pioneer uh, worldwide, actually. It's not only in our Arabic area. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I, I wonder if uh, you have a comparison study between Tiranova uh, uh, dialyzers and outcome and the hemodial filtration, uh, because this, is, again, will be less expensive and probably the outcome it's not the same, maybe, maybe it's, uh, it's near, at least. This is one thing. The second, did you think that it, everyone, if we have the facility to put the patient all in hemodialysis filtration would be reasonable? Or we put only some patients which we think that they are going to stay longer for dialysis, not a short time? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Faisal. I understand your very, very long experience in the field. And uh, for sure, uh, HDX expanded dialysis coming five years ago since it started Theranova from Paxter. Uh, the reduction ratio and the outcome is equivalent to hemodial filtration uh, facility, which plan to use high permeable HDX uh, therapy you understand that it's a uh, protein leaking is higher. So uh, we have to look uh, about nutritional status and serum album. Although many uh, studies say that after a uh, couple of months or uh, even one or two years, serum album did not change significantly, but still you have uh, an album loss. To my opinion, if you have to implement uh, both of them, it's available. 
if you can use uh, Theranova or HDX, is traditionally easier for use because you put the dialyzer and keep the keep things to the nurse. You don't have to uh, monitoring each item in hemodiffusion, except that uh, if you have uh, water treatment station abnormality in the toxin retention capacity may be problematic because it's an internal hemodiffusion. You have a huge fluids coming from the uh, pack filtration. So uh, if you uh, believe me, uh, I think both of them should have the upper hand uh, in treating our patient. Uh, on your second hand, on the second uh, question, there is no contraindication for hemodiffusion. But uh, availability could be important. So if we are using uh, patients incremental dialysis with residual kidney function, good residual kidney function, maybe the native kidney play the role of hemodiffusion. So I will start hemodiffusion later on. Okay, great. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hisham and Professor Faisal. Another question uh, from Dr. Mohammed about, uh, he wants you to clarify just in one or two words, the absolute contraindication for the use of uh, medium cutoff dialyzer. Mm -hmm. yeah, hemodiffiltration technique. Don't mm -hmm. put that on hemodiffiltration machine. Mm -hmm. And CRRT for me. <laughs> sure, I said sure. For my Dr. Masoud Khairi again, uh, the comparison between uh, uh, retinal dialysis and uh, hemodial filtration in children. I think it's a good question. I, I, I don't have data for children, uh, but I have data for uh, the difference between hemodial filtration and the peritoneal dialysis, which are comparable in the uh, Residual kidney function, uh, general acceptance, nutritional status. Although BD has a 20 gram loss of album per week, but the patient can compensate. Uh, are complementary. Why we have to put uh, each one uh, over the other? BD, hemodial filtration, or uh, uh, are the same way of treating patient. So then to compare, uh, choose which is suitable for each patient. I think this is because the, the the use of PD, wide use of PD, especially in children. And you mentioned in your talk, uh, special thanks for Professor Patina transforming all of her uh, yes, hemodiafiltration yes, last uh, years into hemodiafiltration. So I think it's wonderful have... work, wonderful work to have yes. such a governmental hospital and all patients are doing hemodiafiltration for free. It's a wonderful work. Uh, and excuse me, the last question will be for me in this session. Uh, it will be somewhat philosophic question uh, about uh, the, the differences between different countries in using HDF. In the view of uh, benefits you mentioned for HDF and the need for widespread, even uh, especially with the last uh, convinced trial. And I think for these countries, some many countries have... Uh, are having the facilities for initiating and implementing HHTF uh, in a widespread manner. So what do you think the causes behind this lag of implementation of HDF in these uh, well-income countries? It, yeah, yes, it, it differs from country to country. For example, if you compare Sweden and France against uh, uh, others like, like UK and Belgium, uh, each country has its policy, uh, more strict in UK, but plenty of uh, hemodial filtration in uh, Sweden, Belgium, and uh, uh, France. What, so what I was... think, I think it is not related to the scientific. Moreover, it uh, may be uh, uh, depend on the facility, or or who are very strict that you can say that uh, most of other studies does not show uh, cardiovascular uh, probability uh, better. For example, for uh, last convince, they cannot say that uh, better cardiovascular death. So I think there is doubt or unmet needs still in hemodial filtration to convince, truly, not on paper of convince, to convince more 
nephrologist to be the uh, basic therapy is hemodial filtration. Okay, so it is not behind the scientific background. It is about bio uh, country policy. Thank you, Professor Hisham, for this very long, important journey for uh, hemodial filtration. Uh, it's a very teaching uh, directed uh, lecture, uh, very useful for the undergraduates. And it will be uh, yes, a very important guide on their tool to implement HDF wi uh, widely in our countries and in the region. Thank you, attending professors. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you very much. Rami Alubak, and excuse me to close uh, this session. And thank you. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.